Let me catch my breath. Let me drink my fill. Let me lie in fields of green, where only gentle breezes blow. I'll reach out my empty hand for the cup that overflows. Restore my soul. Restore my soul. Restore. Too long here in these shadows These valley walls are all I see I need the skilled eyes of my shepherd Now my vision's failing me Restore Restore my soul. Restore my soul. Restore my soul. Then I will run and not grow weary. I will walk and not fail. I will live with them forever I will have no more need The Lord is my shepherd He is my God I will live with him forever
Good morning and welcome to St. Paul Ellis County. Today is the day of our Lord, Sunday. Uh, it is July 18th, 2021, and we are in the 11th Sunday after Pentecost. So let us join together uh, in thanksgiving unto the Lord. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 100. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us, and we are his. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, and call upon his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for today are Psalm 63 and Psalm 98. Psalm 63. O God, you are my God. Eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a barren and dry land, where there is no water. Therefore, I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I may behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live. and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed and meditate on you in the night watches, for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My soul clings to you. Your right hand holds me fast. May those who seek my life to destroy it go down into the depths of the earth. Let them fall upon the edge of the sword and let them be food for jackals. But the king will rejoice in God. All those who swear by him will be glad. For the mouth of those who speak lies shall be stopped. Psalm 98. Sing to the Lord a new song. For he has done marvelous things. With his right hand and his holy arm. Has he won for himself the victory. The Lord has made known his victory. His righteousness 
has he openly shown in the sight of the nations. He remembers his mercy and faithfulness to the house of Israel. And all the ends of the earth have seen the victory of our God. Shout with joy to the Lord, all you lands. Lift up your voice, rejoice, and sing. Sing to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and the voice of song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Shout with joy before the King, the Lord. Let the sea make a noise and all that is in it, the lands and those who dwell therein. Let the rivers clap their hands and let the hills ring out with joy before the Lord when he comes to judge the earth. In righteousness shall he judge the world and the peoples with equity. Together we say, glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now it was told Saul that David had come to Calah, and Saul said, God has given him into my hand, for he has shut himself in by entering a town that has gates and bars. And Saul summoned all the people to war to go down to Calah to besiege David and his men. David knew that Saul was plotting harm against him. And he said to Abiathar the priest, Bring the aphod here. Then David said, O Lord, the God of Israel, your servant has surely heard that Saul seeks to come to Calah to destroy the city on my account. Will the men of Calah surrender me into his hand? Will Saul come down, as your servant has heard? O Lord, the God of Israel, please tell your servant. And the Lord said, he will come down. Then David said, Will the men of Calah surrender me and my men into the hand of Saul? And the Lord said, They will surrender you. Then David and his men, who were about six hundred, arose and departed from Calah, and they went wherever they could go. When Saul was told David that David had escaped from Calah, he gave up the expedition. And David remained in the strongholds in the wilderness, in the hill country of the wilderness of Ziph. And Saul sought him every day, but God did not give him into his hand. David saw that Saul had come out to seek his life. David was in the wilderness of Ziph at Horesh. And Jonathan, Saul's son, rose and went to David at Horesh, and strengthened his hand in God. And he said to him, Do not fear. For the hand of Saul my father shall not find you. You shall be king over Israel, and I shall be next to you. Saul my father also knows this. And the two of them made a covenant before the Lord. David remained at Horish, and Jonathan went home. Here ends the lesson. We continue with the song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, for he has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy, holy prophets he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show us mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenants. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give knowledge of people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death, and to guide our feet 
into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. James. Be patient, therefore, brothers, until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit of the earth, being patient about it, until it receives the early and the late rains. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Do not grumble against one another, brothers, so that you may not be judged. Behold, the judge is standing at the door. As an example of suffering and patience, brothers, take the prophets who spoke in the name of the Lord. Here ends the lesson. Let us pray. Lord, may your word only be given and your word only received. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. One summer, when I was growing up, I ate a delicious apricot for an afternoon snack. When I was done, of course, I still had the seed left on my plate, and I thought, instead of throwing it away, what if we could have an apricot tree in our backyard? How awesome would that be? So I went to the garden, planted the seed in the ground, watered it, and waited for a really long time. But two whole days later, I went back to the garden, and nothing. Where's my tree? Where are my apricots? Not even a little sprout out of the ground. I decided that the tree wasn't coming and gave up. And after a day or two, I kind of just forgot about the whole thing. As you may have guessed, I am not the most patient person in the world. Actually, when I told my girlfriend, Kayla, that I would be preaching on patience today, she laughed because my idea of getting patience is telling God that I need it right now. And yet, it is a theme that has come up over and over again in the past few years in my life, especially in these past year and a half. And maybe it's come up in yours, too. You and I, we have dreams, we have ideas, we have hopes, and desires and goals, and there are few things harder than having to hear, not now, it'll have to wait. We've all heard that one recently. Just a few examples of having to wait. A viral pandemic across the entire world, skyrocketing prices today for even the most basic items in America, an ice storm in Texas. But I can guarantee that for all of the disappointment and frustration we felt in being forced to wait, there was once a disappointment and frustration deeper than all the rest. For in the first century AD, when James wrote his letter, many Christians were ready, so ready, oh so ready, for Jesus to come back. They were tired of persecution and sin and brokenness and ready for the new creation. And they thought Jesus was going to come back any day now. And even James tells us that we are to be patient and establish our hearts, for the coming of the Lord is at hand. But is it really at hand? Why do we have to be patient if it's just about to happen? Why do we have to wait at all? Why can't it happen right now? Jesus tells us about the farmer who waits for the precious fruits of the earth, being patient about it until it receives the early and the late rains. It takes years and years to grow a fruit tree. And even if the tree is already grown, 
it still takes time each year for the fruit to grow and ripen. I wish I had realized that before planting my apricot tree. I believe that one of the easiest ways for us to go astray as Christians is by doing what I did with that seed. We could so easily say in our impatience, we've waited for thousands of years. I guess Jesus really isn't coming back, at least not anytime soon. Let's just get on with our lives. How foolish that would be. For today, we are closer than ever before to the day of the Lord's coming. We are closer today than we've ever been to that day. And we're closer today than anyone across all of human history has ever been. So we must keep the faith. We must prepare. We must be patient and vigilant. We must keep waiting, keep watching, keep watering. It's that simple and that difficult. For those of us who are impatient, and I believe that's most of us, we know what to do, but we keep going back to our old impatient ways. And our world, especially these days, does not encourage patience. As if on God's cue, Father Hill told me this week that the greatest challenge I will face in my ministry will be dealing with the extraordinary impatience of my own generation, which is used to getting what it wants right away and does not really believe in waiting for things. Our slow recovery from COVID may help a little with that, but it is true that patience can feel like a foreign concept even to Christians of my generation. What is this strange thing you call waiting? Well, for those of us who struggle with trusting God's timing, James gives an example to follow. The prophets, he says, show us how to suffer and how to be patient. This is because they went through a lot of pain for the Lord's sake and because they foretold a Messiah and a future that they would never get to see. Moses led his people out of Egypt, but never touched the Promised Land. Samuel witnessed Israel reject the rule of the Lord and demand a human king instead. Elijah saw the evil done in Israel by King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. The prophets Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, along with several others, lived through their country being overrun with Babylonians, their God's temple being destroyed, their people being scattered and exiled. And John the Baptist, though he did see Jesus Christ, was imprisoned and beheaded before he could see his cousin's death and resurrection for the sake of the world. And yet, they spoke and wrote so beautifully about this faraway future. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Behold, the young woman shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and endowed with salvation humble and mounted on a donkey. These prophets were farmers, planting God's seeds and watering them faithfully centuries in advance so that countless future generations could enjoy the fruits of that labor when the time came. And this is what Christians have been doing for all this time, too. Christians in ancient Rome were martyred in the name of Jesus and they did not live to see his return. Beautiful cathedrals in Europe were built over generations, and many of the builders never lived to see their work completed. And today, we are called to do planting and watering of our own. We should understand that we may not see all the prophecies come true in our earthly lifetimes, but we can take heart 
for though they did not see it before they died, the words of the prophets did come true in the end. I'd like to think that maybe there's an apricot tree that is still growing slowly but surely in my old backyard in spite of all my years of neglect. Maybe some kid will get to enjoy the apricots there someday. And in spite of all our daily failure, failures to live as disciples of Christ, we should know that all of our work today, our prayers, our preaching, our construction, our evangelism, our prayer shots, our love, will, by God's grace, bear delicious fruit for future Christians that we do not know. So do not give up or slow down in any of these things, though we will not see all their fruits. Be patient, for we, like the prophets, are planting and watering seeds for the coming of the Lord. And like any farmer, we just have to wait a little longer for the early and late rains. Establish your hearts and do not grumble. Take a deep breath and wait for Jesus to come on back. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with You Are God. You are God, we praise you. You are the Lord, we acclaim you. You are the Eternal Father. All creation worships you. To you, all angels, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing in endless praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father, of majesty unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocator and guide. You, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal Son of the Father. When you became man to set us free, you did not shun the virgin's womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, bought with the price of your own blood, and bring us with your saints to glory everlasting. We continue with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them, now and always. Day by day, we bless you, we praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. 
have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Almighty God, the fountain of all wisdom, you know our necessities before we ask and our ignorance in asking. Have compassion on our weakness and mercifully give us those things which for our unworthiness we dare not and for our blindness we cannot ask. Through the worthiness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that a week, the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O oh God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life, and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us. You hum, our hum, us humble servants in all assaults of our enemies, that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord God, almighty and everlasting Father, you have brought us safely in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power that we may not fall into sin nor be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold pour out your spirit upon all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Together we say the general thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. God bless you all, and I wish you all a very happy Sunday. Take care.